Welcome to the regular Planning Commission meeting, Grand Blank Township, November 2nd, 2017. Please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Planning Commission members present this evening. We have Mr. Mansour, we have Ms. Coulter, we have Mr. Brown, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Gellings, Mr. Bandersky, Mr. Horsha, Mr. Yancho. I'm going that into my brain a little bit. Um, our planning consultant is Jill Bain. So, Next item on our agenda is approval of this evening's agenda. Any changes, Mr. Secretary? None. I make a motion that we approve the agenda as written. Support. Motion by Mr. Bandersky. That was supported by Mr. Yancho. Okay. Vote is in order. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion passes. No. 8 0. What's that? I'm voted against the agenda. Uh, next item on our agenda is approval of the minutes uh, from our meeting of October 5th, 2017. Mr. Secretary, any changes? Mr. Chairman, I've reviewed the uh, minutes of the meeting of October 5th, 2017, found everything to be in order, and therefore make a recommendation that the minutes be approved. Support. Well, was that, that was an official motion, Mr. Yes, Bandit? I'm sorry. Yes. Motion by Mr. Bandersky, support by Mr. Brown. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes 8-0 this time. <clears throat> Next item um, would be an opportunity for public comment for the public to address the Planning Commission on anything that we are not having a public hearing. I believe we have one public hearing this evening. Uh, regarding an ordinance amendment regarding medical marijuana. So if you're here to participate in that, there'll be an opportunity coming up shortly for that. But if you'd like to address, anyone in the public would like to address the Planning Commission on anything else, now would be the time. Okay, we'll close the public comment portion, bring it back to the Planning Commission. Next item is uh, correspondence. We have uh, a couple of magazines that were uh, scattered along here that were city, or not city, just rambling, has uh, put an ad in there. It's kind of interesting to promote the, the township. Also at a place, we have a couple of planning and zoning news. And we have City of Burton Master Plan. I presume, Ms. Bain, you're going to be you touching on that at all later today? No, I did not get a copy of that. I saw that it was on the agenda, and I thought, I didn't know that everybody else got it ahead of time. So, okay. Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, I'm not familiar with a source, uh, Metro Detroit, maybe Ms. Bain is. Is this, are you familiar with this at all? No. Oh, you were not. Okay. Mr. Bennett said they placed a uh, township had placed an ad and it's kind of yeah. a several county area regional it's a regional uh, magazine. magazine okay interesting mr chairman um, i didn't receive copies of that magazine i don't know if we were all supposed to no they, there were just a packet. few that, there were just okay. a few that were spread out here at okay. the, the table. I, no we didn't get them individually just kind of to show us uh, what the township board is doing to try to get some interest in our community. It pertains to Technology Village, I assume? That's just a promotion of the township. Just of the township in general. Yeah, it's just a general promotion for the township. I don't see anything about technology village. Chairman Gelling, um, on the uh, Burton Master Plan, 
Um, I'm uh, sorry uh, Ms. Bame hasn't gotten a copy of it, uh, but I would like to, I mean, as a <clears throat> part of the class that we attended, uh, I know that it's a requirement for surrounding, count, surrounding uh, municipalities to engage um, others when they're redoing their master plan. So we'll be doing the same thing, I imagine, uh, in the future with uh, Burton as well. So <clears throat> I guess I'd like to request that as we uh, put our plan together that we kind of do a side-by-side uh, -side with uh, the Burton plan and um, you know, make sure that we're covering all the bases that they are and maybe one-up them if we can. Well, um, just for the Planning Commission's information, when we do the um, Township's master plan, and you'll see it if you looked in one of the previous ones, there is always an assessment of the adjacent community. Mm -hmm. So we will look at not only Burton, but all of the other adjacent communities to Grand Blanc Township, um, looking at what their future land use plans are in consideration for what the townships might be and whether they're the si similar or how compatible they may or may not be. And then if, and, and we haven't typically, we don't typically find any that are really radically different. Um, but should that come up, we would definitely look at it. And I will, uh, I made a note to ask for a copy of that. And then, um, I don't know if it says with that information what the review period is. That's what I was just going to bring if up. I did a, see it identified, but typically there is a deadline. If it's an update, it's 42 days before their public hearing. F December 12th is their public hearing. Okay, so, okay. They've, so uh, we still have time. So um, it's optional for a community to provide any feedback. Um, sometimes a community might offer some comments. Um, they may offer a simple statement that says, Grand Blanc Township has no issues with the City of Burton's master plan for land use. But, um, and, or if there are, they may offer those as well. I, I didn't so see any reference have, in there. If we all want to take a look at it, um, and I can put a short summary together for our next meeting, that'll still give us time. That's the 7th of December. That'd be great. We can send them yeah. something yeah. quick. I'll do that. There was no mention in the Burton uh, plan of any particular tie-in with Grand Blank Township. It was just like okay. our information was just yeah. kind of slid in there. Yeah, and it looked like um, Mr. Yancher showed me a copy of his. <laughs> where the maps were not um, printed crap properly. Yeah, they weren't so, unfolded. Uh, yeah, we'll try to get that, too. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Yancho? Um, when that comes back, is it possible for our GIS department to provide a composite map that aligns our future land use map with their land use map so that we can have that all on one page? Do we have that already? We can, we can do that using Photoshop or another photo so that um, we can copy it. We can look sure. at how those zonings yeah. align across yeah. the yeah. border. And that would apply also to other townships mm -hmm. around us. That often how we'll do a composite <coughs> map, if we can get them to be a similar scale. But we can show you at least a comparison. Mr. Chair. Mr. Johnson. Just as a point of reference, too, a lot of times when we have, uh, like Grand Reserve, for example, is on the border with Atlas. Mm -hmm. Um, we've done stuff with Holly Township regarding the uh, parks and that. Anytime that something's coming up that's like that, we always send a notice to them if they have somebody that wants to come in and give an opinion or, you know, how they think right. it will affect their area. Yeah. Uh, we've had a couple of um, cross, uh, cross discussions regarding school districts, things like that, where um, school of choice even, where they've uh, talked about those types of issues. So... We're, we're always open to that, and we try to keep the, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as, as much as we do with the city, I guess, is the same thing. So we're used to reaching out to the other to the other areas. So are you going to con someone from the township is going to contact uh, Burton to get those maps that yes. are actually in fold? All right, next item on our agenda would be old business. I don't believe we have any old business this evening. Would bring us to new business zoning case 656 ordinance amendment public hearing regarding medical marijuana dispensaries ms bain thank you um, as the planning commissioners may recall at our meeting in october we introduced some language uh, to clarify some provisions in the zoning ordinance in light of the township opting out of state legislation to allow um, medical marijuana dispensaries in the township um, the state law has allowed for communities to either opt in or opt out, and the township has opted out. And in so doing, um, we don't find that the, um, that the use 
of medical marijuana dispensary nor the standards that go with that are applicable in the township zoning ordinance and they should just be removed so that that is clear that they're not permitted and so that's what we have modifying section 3.1.12 c which is the um, health care district and then section 4.77 those were the standards for special land use specific for that use and i'd be happy to answer any questions any questions for ms bain um, oh, Mr. Chairman, yeah, I'm just wondering if you know whether or not any of our surrounding townships or That's cities are opting in or out. That's a good question. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't heard of too many that are opting in at this point. Um, I think I feel like there are many communities that are taking a wait and see approach to this. Chairman Galling, Mr. Manser, Mayor, uh, Ms. Bame, um, uh, at the um, <laughs> that little education can be dangerous, but. At the uh, session that I attended, uh, the MSU citizen planner, there was a, a, a portion on, um, uh, I guess I'm not exactly sure what it was called, but basically um, authorized or like legitimate uses um, mm -hmm. uh, that are required by the state in terms of, you know, within municipalities, you have to approve use certain certain uses to Correct. cover different types of housing and et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I guess the question is, <clears throat> Are, are we at a, is it from a state standpoint, is um, the medical marijuana dispensary or some other aspect of it, is that included in a, a use that we have to accommodate? That is a good question, and no, it's not. Okay. Um, especially in light of the fact that the state has allowed communities to opt out of participating in that, that is not something that that would be expected to be accommodated within the zoning ordinance, like other uses would be. Okay, so uh, I guess, but there's still time on that. I mean, it would be hard to imagine that a state that's authorized medical marijuana uh, in some regard not to uh, in some way enforce or to, to um, you know, require some accommodation, but it's just, that it, it's just not on the books yet. It's not on the books yet, and the current legislation allows communities to opt out. Okay. So dispensary is not something that is a um, use that is expected to be accommodated in every community. And the state's made that clear by allowing that opt-out language. So our, our current ordinance actually is a result of the previous language yes. that we, we thought was requiring us to accommodate it in some fashion, so we had a specific zoning district and that kind right. of thing. So which it now appears not to be the case with the current ordinance, so, or not ordinance, but law, so. Mr. Horry. Thank uh, you. Does uh, the growing of and transportation and disbursement of marijuana fall under this ordinance that we're dealing with here? Um, the legislation that allows personal caregivers to grow um, and managed care for, that does not change. Um, and that is considered to be something that happens as a home occupation. Um, but the transport is not something that would be impacted by the township zoning laws. Transportation of, the, of marijuana. Could be going through, through the township, township roadways. As long as it wasn't being dis Commercial growth, growing of it is also not permitted. Not permitted. Okay. It's tricky. It's tricky. Yeah. Well, it's it's very vague legislation. That's what uh, at the state me. level, and, and I, it's, it make it makes it very challenging for communities to anticipate and plan and regulate. I don't know if anybody here has been following Colorado. But that bothers me personally a great deal. And, uh, you know, the governor declares a state of emergency because the dispensary of marijuana is interrupted because they sell so much of it they can't keep supply. You know, it just get, gets on to the level, of, for me, being ludicrous. And I get concerned when, because this appears to be so vague the door is just being open and I'm, you know, I've got concern about it. Right, and I think that's why the township has chosen to opt out. The township board chose to opt out of allowing them because I think they wanted to wait to see what happens. And 
I would anticipate additional changes to be coming at the state level, state legislature, to provide more clarity. Because I think that's what everybody's asking for. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Mr. Brown. Um, for some of our uh, newer board members, and help me for our older <laughs> board members. Season. From, from a tenured standpoint. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the board did establish within the community, in the healthcare district, a place for medical marijuana. And I'm trying to remember, I'm going to say the passage of time, three, four, five years ago, I'm looking for some validation of that. I, yes, it was, I think, 2012, I think it was yeah. five years ago. Was it? Yeah. So we so did we, address it for the we new did, members and now of we're the board it out. Uh, quite some time ago. I'm sorry, Ms. Bain. Now, now we're taking it out. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, we did, we did act as a body. Yes. Yeah. At that time, that. we were yes. proactive about it. Yeah. Well, we've got this is supposed to be a public hearing, so we'll go to the public. See if anyone in the public would like to uh, address the planning commission regarding uh, our proposed ordinance amendment. Are you sure. Okay. Doesn't look like it, so we'll bring it back up to the planning commission. Any other discussion? Here? Chairman Galling. Mr. Manson. I'd like to uh, make a motion that we uh, approve the amended ordinance. Uh, uh, zoning uh, ZC656 as it relates to medical marijuana dispensaries in the township. Motion by Mr. Mansour. Can I clarify? It's a motion to recommend approval. Yeah. Recommend approval. Yeah. Thank you. I'll support that motion. So, motion by Mr. Mansour to recommend approval to the township board. That was supported by Mr. Brown. Any other discussion? Not a vote is in order. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes 8-0. Next item also says it's zoning case 656. Is that a typo? It is a typo. It doesn't have a number yet, as far as I know. Um, and Sign I have, ordinance amendment. Right. So I'm going to hand I'll give you both. Would you just pass those? I think there's too many there. but. Um, and I apologize for not getting this to you in advance. So our, this will just be a conversation to introduce the ideas um, for amendment to the sign ordinance. There's a short cover memo that identifies three issues. Yeah. Three issues that we wanted to just clean up in the sign ordinance for now. Um, one is regarding temporary, temporary um, signage. Um, primarily in relation to non-commercial uses, the case, and I think we've talked about it in the past, um, after maybe after it, the case came down, the Reed versus the town of Gilbert. Um, so we wanted to clarify some language in the zoning ordinance, or the sign ordinance, which is part of the zoning ordinance, um, as it pertains to temporary signage. And really, um, it, it, what, it, what our approach is with this um, is to make the temporary sign very simple. So there aren't a variety of kinds of temporary signs. There's just temporary signs. They're either freestanding or they're on a wall. And they're regulated by district and they're regulated for a certain amount of time rather than citing out different kinds of temporary signage. Um, what we want to try to avoid is having regulations that are content based. We want to be content neutral. So we don't want to have to essentially read the sign to determine whether it is, meets our ordinance or not. Um, because that gets into content regulation. So we really are looking at regulating signs by time, place, and manner. So how long a sign can be out, where it is, what it looks like, and how it's displayed and how it's attached or affixed. And so you'll see as you go through there um, a section where we've deleted some language as strike through and new at language added in in red. Um, the other two things were fairly straightforward and kind of minor, but um, Tech Village and Technology Park Districts, uh, we needed to add those in so that um, should the need arise for signage that we actually have them identified in there. So we put them in where we felt like they belonged. Um, in doing that, we also added projecting signs in. They're not currently permitted. Those are the signs that are perpendicular to a building. They're typically pedestrian oriented in nature. You see them a lot in downtown areas or more walkable areas. Those signs are really good and we think those belong in the technology village um, center district. So we've removed them from being prohibited and added them in specifically to that section. And then we've also talked about increasing the amount of signage for um, signs that are within proximity to I-75. 
Um, so to allow them to be eight feet high instead of five or six feet, depending on the district, and to go to total sign area of 100 square feet. Right now it's 32 in an office district and up to 75 square feet in commercial and industrial districts. Um, so not a huge change, but I think a little bit of height and a little bit of more sign area is appropriate. Um, given that we don't require uh, one or the other in terms of a wall sign or a monument sign, there are cases along um, the I-75 corridor where you see a building that's got fairly large signage, and for them to also have a monument sign, it doesn't seem like that monument seem sign needs to be tremendously bigger, but maybe slightly bigger, maybe slightly taller. Um, so that's, we've just put that in there. So I don't, we can talk about these things, and then, but if you, I'm not asking you to set a public hearing for next month, because I don't, I don't feel like I gave you enough time to really look at it. And if there are other issues that we want to talk about, as long as we're going in here, um, we can do that also. i got a question. I don't know if Mr. Brown can answer this. Mm -hmm. We just, uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals just granted a variance for the McLaren building. Mr. Chairman, What's you're the stealing my thunder. I just want to know <laughs> what, the si what the height of that sign is or what the size of that one is. Well, I remember some, uh, some of our planners uh, talked about that. that uh, McLaren did come up and uh, request larger signage and, and looking at uh, item number three in Ms. Beam's uh, uh, communication to the Planning Commission, we did take uh, things just like item number three into, con into consideration. If you'll look, if you've been by on I-75 and looked at the new building that is up and the signage is there and uh, I think uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals made a very good decision we did allow them 80% of what they had requested. And I think what's up there, not only does it look nice, but people can indeed see it as they're coming up and down I-75, especially on southbound I-75. So take a look at it. I think it turned out really well. When I saw it on paper, I thought it was too big, honestly. But I think seeing it in real life, it's a it's appropriate size in my opinion. That's why that's why I was curious whether yes. it was uh, what the size was in it. But you you can tell us when you get to your report well, if you'd like. I'm done now. No. <laughs> <laughs> so is there that it was a wall sign, right? Yes, it is yeah. a wall so sign. So this was only addressing monument signage. Is there? A they have not brought anything to us. If you're asking about, I'm no, asking if you'd like to change, oh, I see. make an, amend, an additional amendment. I think it would be something we should have a discussion on, sure. Chairman Kelling, so answer? a wall sign, is that uh, something that's typically mounted on like the top of a building or is that different? No, you're not, not allowed to mount it. above it, but on, on the building. So on the side. Of ordinance the does not allow it to be above. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Okay. They're allowed to be 64 square feet um, professional office, office service, and I included Tech Park in this one, and uh, R&D. And they can be up to 100 square feet in when they have a setback of over 300 feet. So, and that is in the other commercial and industrial districts. Well, if they're, so Tech Park might be one where we add in that additional um, setback. So we have in, if you look on the top one, the principal wall signs, it has a zero to 100 foot setback, 101 to 300 feet setback, and an over 300 foot setback. And that one gives the maximum of 100 foot feet. So, excuse me, Ms. Bame, uh, how do these, um, the signage regulations or ordinances compare with other communities kind of up and down 75? Um, I, we haven't looked specifically at those along I-75. I could look at, there's not a lot, a lot of, I'm trying to think of, well, maybe, yeah, there are some communities that would have significantly more. I think the closer in you get into Oakland County, certainly yeah. Auburn Hills, I feel like right. they probably allow more. Um, Probably, probably. Um. Well, at one time, I remember we were, uh, there was an auto uh, auto dealership mm -hmm. that had a large 
uh, sign on I-75 southbound that uh, we went to court on because we thought it was, you know, way, way more than uh, it should be. And ultimately, I think we lost that case. But that was that was a billboard kind of sign, sure. yeah. Mr. Mansour. That's right. what that was. Yeah. So that may be something that that all of the planning commissioners want to do is take as you are driving through the community, in and out of the community, into other communities, um, especially along I-75, if you see signage that you say, gosh, this seems like there's a lot of signs, big, huge signs in this area. I don't think it looks that bad, or this looks terrible. We want to make sure. If you can let me know, we can look into those for you. So sometimes it's hard to mm -hmm. look at numbers and really grasp what, what the implication of that is and what the impact is mm -hmm. until you see it. And you say, no, you know what, we don't want to look like that community because that is just too much. Or, geez, you can't find anything because the signs are too small. Um, so kind of looking at other places to get a feel for how sign regulations are I actually guess, implemented. If you could make a note regarding uh, the wall signs, yes. that we ought to at least discuss that next yeah. month. <clears throat> be interesting to know too Mr. Chairman um, what these changes would mean in, in light of the um, CBA I was just making myself a note to get the dimensions of the ones that have been approved thank you um, so that because I think that'll help I mean if it if the change eliminated, you know, 10% mm -hmm. of their challenges with regard to signs, then maybe it's a good thing. Don't want to see people. Yeah, and I'm even thinking back to, I think the Holiday Inn even, and now that's probably not quite as close as what we were, I was putting in here, 300 feet. I think they're farther away. Yeah, it's more than 300, I would think. Um, Holiday Inn Express. Dort Federal Credit Union, I think they had a variance for a larger signage. Security, I think, asked for additional signage. Security in their new facility, yeah. yeah. By the way, has anyone seen that second building? It's all done. Mm -hmm. it's really, really, it's turning out nice. Mm -hmm. This right here, by the way, if you can mm -hmm. see that the other Zoning Board of Appeals uh, members can get this as well, I think this would be very helpful really, okay. to see where we're headed. Comments. Yeah. Good idea. <coughs> Any more discussion on that? Sign ordinance? If not, we move on to committee reports. Mr. Manson. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I guess I'd just like to, uh, to say uh, uh, that I uh, appreciate going to the um, citizen planner um, um, course. Had to miss a couple of the sessions for certain reasons, but uh, we're making those up. But I found it was very worthwhile. And for those of you considering it, um, it if you can get it done in a day or two, I think that's better. It's uh, kind of hard to reserve seven consecutive weeks off. So anyway, I appreciate that. <clears throat> um, also, uh, and this was uh, really what generated my um, no vote against the uh, agenda, is that uh, we've asked uh, from a township board for us to uh, get on the docket uh, tree ordinance review trailer DAS and a master plan timetable and somehow and those didn't get on here and yet we slid a, a sign ordinance one in here so I would uh, request that the Commission um, get uh, time set for those uh, review of those ordinances please if, could I, if, if it's appropriate may I sure. ask what how you'd like those to be placed on the agenda in terms of what what kind of, is it discussion on those items? Is it, are you looking for language or research from yeah, us? Ex exactly, so uh, the, the idea was is to look at uh, with the, 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 the DAS one, the satellite one is new. So that would be kind of starting from scratch. I think from that scratch. the township attorney has been looking at that, yep. so I will get, no? Yes, yes, exactly okay. right, exactly right. So in that respect, it's new. Um, uh, the other one, the trailer and the, the the uh, tree ordinance, uh, we, uh, the idea was to um, ask for a review of those, uh, make sure that we have, uh, um, um, you know, the, the underlying uh, uh, authority set and that we have uh, um, 
I guess, uh, put ourselves in a position where we can <clears throat> defend and, and enforce, in particular, some of the trailer ones. Uh, the issues that have come up. Vehicles? Yes, parking in in, uh, in driveways and, and sides of houses, okay. et cetera. And, and just as a matter of, I think, procedure, normally I think um, when a planning commissioner would like to bring things onto the agenda, you would ask the planning commission if they would like to put those things on the agenda. Okay. So I, and, and specifically, I only break that because of the trailer yep. issue that I felt like the last time we discussed it that the planning commission didn't really want to talk about it okay. anymore. But that's up to you. If there were specific things that you thought, like, hey, I know you guys didn't really want to talk about this, but we need to address this and this, <clears throat> and then see if there's consensus to bring that and put it on the agenda. Uh, so if it's a matter of, um, if, like, if you're feeling as though there isn't proper enforcement of it and that we're missing something there, then... I Okay, I will I will uh, document that, but it's uh, kind of a request coming from the the township board. Okay, it's not not uh, something in particular from the guy who happened to be sitting in this chair. Okay, um, but uh, then the other thing in terms of priorities, uh, the master plan is a big deal. Uh, mm -hmm. So I guess I'd like to kind of get that in the queue uh, first. I'm sure there'll be other you know there'll be slack times we can address the other ones, but uh, the master plan is pretty important. So I have um, to the, the DAS, mm -hmm. and I will get with David Laddie, the township attorney, to see where he's at with that and if there's anything that needs to be addressed um, within the township zoning ordinance. Because it's my understanding, he was working on um, general code amendments that would, dis that would regulate those types of antenna in the public rights of way. Exactly. Um, yeah. But there may be things that we need to add in to the wireless communications facilities provisions within the zoning ordinance. So we will get we will get through that, and I think that's a good there's, thing to add. If you're there's been some um, uh, discussion of that in Flint Township mm -hmm. as well. Uh, they're bantering back and forth about can can we extract uh, co-location fees and that kind of yeah, thing. Franchise so, I mean, fees for yeah, exact, yeah absolutely. And exactly. We're actually working on that in a number of our communities as well. As yep. well. Um, the trailer one, though, I'm struggling on that one because I, I don't know really if you want that just to be a discussion item and we'll see where it goes or were there specific changes that the township board has in mind? I think it was uh, around uh, issue of enforcement and uh, and if we have a, yes. a, a legitimate way to, to kind of enforce that, uh, that will meet the intent of the ordinance. Is that more of an issue to be discussed administratively? Because I, I and I ask because I don't know that from the zoning standpoint we can write all the language we want. Sure, sure, sure. But, I get it. But it's up to the administration to enforce. Well, I, I think we should, what I would uh, request is that we have a, a review of the language. Okay. Um, make sure that okay. it still uh, makes sense, and then if it uh, turns into an enforcement issue, then I guess that's something that the board will have to take up uh, with administratively. I can inquire what the enforcement has been because I, I believe there was a change directed by the township board um, and so we could see how that's been going that was a couple of months ago they, for enforcement I think uh, we took a look at it and the trustees agreed that the the, the punitive portion yes. of it was excessive mm -hmm. for people like that and I think if I recall correctly we struggled with that in terms of what what can it be you know how long can a, a recreational vehicle set in a driveway without uh, the neighbors, uh, you know, calling and complaining and a ticket being issued or a summons. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know that we ever came to any conclusion other than that mm -hmm. we thought the language on, on the rolls right now was a little punitive, a little, little heavy-handed. Mm -hmm. But I think, I mean, I'm, I think I'm that asking we thought my colleagues. That, I think that we thought that, and then it was... I thought, decided that the um, enforcement would start the day that there's a complaint made. Mm -hmm. So that there wasn't, that was that part that people were struggling with. Well, well how long? And right. so from that point, that starts the clock that is in the ordinance. And it sounded like, at least at that time, um, the planning clerk had felt that that would be sufficient for an even um, approach to enforcement. But I can check and find out mm -hmm with enforcement, how it's been going, what kind of complaints the township might be receiving. Okay. Um, and we can see where, if, if we have an issue that needs to be rat, uh, rectified. Appreciate that. 
for sure. So we have those, and then the master plan. And I've talked to the township superintendent mm -hmm. about that and about putting together a scope of work for that, like an outline of what we might want to tackle with the master plan. Yep. And so I can bring that if you are interested in t into talking about that at the December meeting as well. That'd be great. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Mr. Chairman, just, Al, just as a matter of information, uh, several planning commissioners did a little survey and we came back and listed where we saw trailers parked in the driveway or in the side of the homes or, or on the corner lot and so forth. So we, we gathered our own data and as Jill's saying, it was, uh, we agreed, I think, with the ordinance as written, it was just the enforcement. Who's going to go and enforce it? It seems to as I think Ms. Bain mentioned, it depends upon whether there's complaints, and the number of complaints seem to vary by subdivision, basically. Probably neighborhood, I would imagine. Older subdivision. Yeah. I know my neighbor had a trailer parked in his front driveway for years. I never said anything, so mm -hmm. it was still there. You were hoping for a ride. <laughs> 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 but, I mean, I can see if, you know, you spent a lot of money, you got a you know, new, uh, you're in a newer subdivision, yeah, you'd find that objectionable, so. Yeah, there was quite a bit of variance. Mr. Yancho? Wasn't there a problem, though, with the f fact that a, a person could pull the trailer out, drive around the block, and put it back? <laughs> yes. And then, there you go. And then he's, he's not, he's in he's compliance. In compliance. We, did dis we did discuss that. Yes, we did. Okay, we'll revisit. Uh, thank you, that was it for me. Ms. Bain, did you hear anything else for planning and zoning? I have a planning brief for you. All right. But we don't have to talk about it. I'll just tell you what it is. Um, the front page is um, part <clears throat> one of a two-part series, and we're talk these uh, are talking about streets and what makes great streets. Um, but the first part talks about what makes congested streets. <laughs> and we know that the majority of, of why streets are congested are because of the built environment and the way that we have have spread all of our uses out from one another, but there is also a role for um, for us drivers that we play in the congestion, and there's some notes well, how about facts Sa about that. How about Saginaw Street between 4 and 6 p.m.? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it's one in of the, the city, points. Is not only do we all want to drive alone, we want to drive in our own personal cars, but we all want to be on the road at the same time. <laughs> And so that is, that's contributing to congestion. On the back side, we wanted to highlight a couple of some uh, cool new uh, technology-related tools we're using for planning and uh, providing zoning information. You might recognize the third one. Um, that's some information that we've put together for Technology Village. Uh, we had put together some marketing information, and then we converted into an online um, platform. It's called a story map, and it's an interactive way that people can get into um, some additional information about Technology Village. So we're kind of excited about it. We think it's a cool tool, and we're happy that we were able to do that for the township. So we'll highlight it. Was this uh, featured at the uh, most recent annual? Uh, it was not. It, it was, was not. Oh. We did not do that. Um, but we may do a session at the next conference on tools that can be used mm -hmm. um, for planning and providing Thank access you. to information. Seen much interest from developers yet? Um, I don't know if we have yet, um, but I know that we're sort of still getting the word out. Sure, it's early. Yep. Is that it? I think that's it for now. Well, the long awaited for a zoning board of appeals. Well, I think you've probably heard enough of me already, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman. Mm -hmm. Uh, there wasn't a meeting in October, so, uh, I, but I did want to bring up the McLaren uh, signage that I thought turned out nicely. That's all I have. Next item will be site plan review. Within the last month, we've seen one item, which is uh, we saw just before this meeting was a property on South Saginaw Street. I'm not even sure. I identified it was the uh, school at one point. The former school. No. And it's now proposed to be a church. Mm -hmm. Is 
They're going to tear down one or a portion of one of the buildings. They're going to use one of the buildings as a Sanctuary. sanctuary thing. Well, sanctuary for sure, obviously. The other one was more of a recreational facility. I think they called it a gymnasium, but it's probably a little low for shooting basketballs. Uh, looking to upgrade. The, we gave them uh, preliminary site plan approval this evening with comments for them to come back for a final. Chairman, is this the, where the academy was here, just down the... By Warwick? Yes, Warwick. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. All that we've seen uh, for site plan in the last yeah. month. I guess it brings us to a motion for adjournment. A we'll move, Mr. Chairman. A motion by Mr. Brown to Second. adjourn. Support by Mr. Panderski. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, we are adjourned at 7.45 p.m. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.